Hi, welcome to Excel Works video tutorials. In this video, I will demonstrate how to construct and pass an analytical system Jacobian for the nonlinear system solver NL Solve in the Excel Lab library. Basically, the procedure is the same for all solvers in the Excel Lab library. You can learn how to construct a system analytical Jacobian in the help manual. Basically, it's a derivative of your formulas with respect to the variables in, a, in the uh, order that's been passed to the solver. So if you've passed them in this order, you differentiate f1 with respect to x, y, and z, and arrange them in this array that you can then pass to the solver. Generally, it's not necessary to construct and pass an analytical Jacobian, and most often it's not known, and the solver can compute an accurate numerical Jacobian. Let's demonstrate this for an example in Excel. I'm using here Paul's singular function. Uh, this set of equations have a unique solution at the point 0000. zero, zero, zero. I've constructed the system in Excel using the variables x1 to x4, where I've defined the formulas in a10 to a13. I've also constructed or defined the analytical Jacobian for these equations in the array d5 to d8. If I show the formulas, you can see that I have differentiated each equation in my system with respect to my variables x1 to x4 in the order x1, then x2, then x3, then x4. For the first formula, we have only, it's a linear equation, so we have only constant. For the second formula, or the third formula, we have 0 for differentiating with respect to x1, but then with respect to x2, we end up with another formula, which is a derivative of this expression, and so forth. It's a straightforward procedure. Now I'm going to solve the system using the default numerical Jacobian. I need four rows, because I have four variables, but I'm going to allocate a larger array with two columns and six rows, because I'm planning to use the formatting option. I insert my solver formula in this allocated array. My first argument is a reference to the system formulas. My second argument is a reference to the system variables. I'm going to skip over the third argument because we don't have inequalities, or we can pass zero instead. And I'm going to pass the key header with the value true to format the solution. As you can see, <coughs> the solver computes the known solution 0000 within the requested default accuracy. We can improve the um, accuracy of this solution with the default numerical Jacobian by tightening the tolerances for the solver. And however, we're going to show the effect by simply using the same settings and passing an analytical Jacobian instead. So I'm going to repeat the same call, but now I'm going to pass the known analytical Jacobian. And in my fifth argument, I'm going to simply highlight the array containing the analytical Jacobian and pass it to the solver in the optional argument. And the solver computes the solution. If we compare the two solutions, clearly we have a higher accuracy here for the same requested tolerances, and also a fewer number of iterations for the solver. As you can see, the sum of square errors has also been dropped significantly. Uh, uh, closer to zero than when using numerical Jacobian. In general, it's uh, sufficient to work with a numerical Jacobian, but if you have the analytical Jacobian available, it might be advantageous to uh, use it. Uh, keep in mind that any errors in your definition of the system Jacob analytical system Jacobian can lead to errors in convergence. So whenever you're using an analytical system Jacobian, you have to be dead sure that you're Jacobian is correct and corresponds exactly to the system that you have passed in the order that you have specified. This concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching.